So how, how do we react as a society to a pandemic? Well, one is uh, we do strict um, uh, isolation and uh, physical distancing and wearing of masks, both to protect uh, the people that you come near by viral shedding not coming out of your exhalation, your expiration, as they call it, uh, because you're sending out millions of them and also sneezing and coughing where they're now in like these little tiny capsules of droplets which can last for minutes, uh, maybe even longer uh, out there and then somebody can get them. So we do that with a mask. And at the same time, if somebody breathes next to you, that if you have a very good seal on your mask, you're not gonna get it you're not going to breathe it in because that's really the way you're going to breathe it. You can't eat it. If it gets your tongue and such like that, it's going to die and be deformed. You know, there are acids that will break apart these spike proteins. The whole key is that spike protein. UV kills it. Uh, uh, heat kills it. Uh, there's all kinds of methods that, that can get. I mean, it's not, it, it's not uh, invulnerable. But uh, if it does get through and it breathes down your passage, it goes right down and it gets into, lodged into your lungs, it's going to replicate. Your body's now going to make it uh, go ahead and and we, there's no antibody to it. Now, that takes me to the questions of antibodies. One of the old techniques of uh, trying to uh, get people uh, uh, vaccinated or cured from the, uh, from the, uh, the disease that's caused by the uh, coronavirus is to take plasma from somebody already infected. Plasma is the white substance. It's like, it's the slippery see-through stuff in blood. This contains all the antibodies. So you take some of those antibodies and you actually inject it into the other person. You know, do it with a transfusion and see if those antibodies work. You don't know which one it is. It's trial and error. And this is where testing has to come into place to make sure you got it right. You take that in and then you hope that it, it's, it killed the virus because the other person has immunity. And that's a whole other question because that's up to debate now whether we're even developing the proper immunities to it. But we're definitely doing some sort of evolution to the immunity. So we're getting close to it and, and this is what they're working on. And what an RNA vaccine is, is simply uh, RNA is a code. It's a protein code that tells cells in your body to make this. So we can design very easily, probably in hours scientists can design it. And I'm gonna tell you why I'm standing here. Uh, they can design this and just say, make this protein, make this spike protein. Now when they make the spike protein, spike protein starts floating around in your blood. Antibodies on, uh, on the lookout say, what the hell is this? This is foreign, I've never seen it before attack and then they develop an immunity they try to figure out how to kill that spike protein in doing so antibodies develop now it works problem with rna rna uh, perishes within days or hours and uh, it needs to be kept frozen in a deep freeze at minus 80 degrees uh, Celsius. Oh, and if it were to be important to refrigerate, let's say into vials and, and try to be delivered around the world to vaccinate billions of people, you'd only have a day or two before they're, they're, they're not effective anymore. So RNA is logistically a nightmare and no RNA virus has been approved by the FDA. Now there's DNA vaccines, and this is where the promises uh, uh, li are likely. Uh, there are more than uh, 36, probably about 40 now, uh, uh, that want to go to trial. Trials and testing are key because the virus, the, if they inject you, one of the old forms is to take an old weakened form of, of the virus and then inject you with that, and then this way your antibodies overcome it. The other part is to put DNA of that spike protein and put it within, say, a, a common cold coronavirus, common cold, you then, you're then, you take that vaccine, you take that cold, and inside it's got that new DNA, it now sucks into your lungs, and it builds, it, 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 it uh, creates that, uh, that spike protein, then your antibodies start to go to work again and say kill this thing because it's foreign. And uh, they, they have people willing to take uh, these uh, measurements, to, to take these tests. So, you know, God bless them for doing it, but, uh, we, you know, it, history has shown us it, it, it has not happened. Now, one way that taste testing uh, this uh, uh, vaccination is using these uh, bio safety labs and there are a few of them in the United States uh, the most extreme being biosafety lab uh, number four as one in Boston University now right behind me is 
Rockefeller University. It's closed right now, but there are 18 labs in there right now with 130 scientists working feverishly, no pun intended, on COVID-19. So right there, it's happening for the world. And who knows what they could potentially find, but it's one of the many places on Earth, every country is trying to work on and do as a lab, to um, not build an entire RNA uh, molecule, but to build it in pieces. And this is where they use this CRISPR method. And I forgot now the whole acronym, but uh, you can look it up, CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R. And uh, what they want to do is build like a, a piece of Ikea furniture that comes in pieces. And each piece has a shelf life and doesn't need to be refrigerated. So by sending it in pieces and sections, we can then assemble the whole protein and then make the vaccine. And that would make a good uh, delivery system. And that would also make it very fast. Say, why don't we just let this uh, virus run its course and let everyone get infected and, and hope for immunity? Well, there's a good chance of that, yeah. Uh, and uh, yes, we can, uh, someone will develop antibodies or well, all people will uh, end up with antibodies. But at what cost? Uh, in the United States, we could see uh, probably at minimum a million dead worldwide, hundreds of millions dead. Do you want to go more? So that, that is a very tough political uh, decision to make. The whole thing about the COVID-19, it's a virus, and we don't know what this virus is capable of. We always thought, oh, it only affects the elderly. Oh, it only affects those with underlying conditions. Oh, it has an incubation here in two days. Oh, it has 14 days. Oh, now it has six weeks. Oh, by the way, now it affects children six children in a completely different way, not with there. So we don't know what it does, you know, uh, like uh, HPV or HIV or hepatitis or herpes. These viruses, they stay within you for life. And the repercussions to what they do to you at different ages in your life, you don't know. And the COVID-19, we all could have it and not take a vaccine for it to try to eradicate it we get older and all of a sudden we develop respiratory syndrome. We don't know what it would do. So it could go anywhere. Uh, that's when we talk about the permutations of the, the, of the amount of possibilities of what this thing can do to us. The last thing I want to talk about is contact tracing. To me, this is more than a Herculean task. And then we have Google and Apple who are saying they're doing anonymously that they're going to contact trace with our phones. Well, in the United States of America, we do have freedoms in our Constitution. Uh, so which do we balance? Saving the country, the world? Uh, does America step up and become the savior of the world and do this? Do we infringe on our freedoms and our privacy? Uh, this is big stuff, and it's not for me to answer. It's for you to think about. And uh, freedoms, that's a whole other question. Uh, you know, I, I I absolutely cherish the freedoms in America and where we cross it, you know, it, each time it's an individual decision and not something that falls along party lines. And that's what dis uh, really, really bugs the hell out of me in, in America that we're not united on this and that we've taken this to a political forum. And I don't know what it's going to take for us to change, but I feel some things are happening as uh, reopening and what certain politicians are doing what and us being an election year and the world and the, econ and the economy. So if we don't make the right decisions, external factors will. So uh, let's stay the course we're doing and push even more and come up with more ideas uh, to perhaps uh, eradicate this virus through a vaccine, most hopefully.